aunt was delivering her baby girl. And I was in the waiting room with my mom and grandmother. We could hear my aunt scream while she was in labor. I also wasn't feeling great. I was experiencing a pain of my own. My stomach was hurting so much, I also started to complain and cry. My mom and grandma thought I was seeking attention, and at a point, got angry. On that day, my aunt was screaming from the inside, and I was screaming from the outside. As my aunt's pain became worse with every contraction, I too felt my cramps intensify and transform into sharp and stabbing pains. It was after my aunt delivered, and we went home feeling relieved and excited about the birth of my baby cousin, that I learned that I had gotten my period for the first time. And at that moment, I knew the cause of my pain. My mom and grandma surprisingly congratulated me and were happy for me and told me that I now became a lady. I could not understand why they were so excited when all I felt was pain and discomfort. Month after month, I realized that my pain and cramps became worse. I thought that with time, this pain would get easier or I would get used to it at some point. At first, I thought that it was probably all in my head and I was giving it too much attention and tried to convince myself that it was a few days and the pain would go away. Year after year, as I started to feel worse, the pain increased. It became more intense and agonizing. The pain was piercing and sometimes felt like I was being punched in the stomach, which made me feel nauseous. Also, the four days of suffering every month became a week and gradually, year after year, I felt the pain on a daily basis. At times, as much as I tried to hide the pain, I couldn't help but cringe and wrap my arms around my stomach and bend my chest to my knees. It was moments like these that my pain defeated my ability to hide what I was feeling. As a teenager, each time I asked the woman in my family if this pain was normal, they always answered with a confident yes. I was told that yes, this pain is normal. Your mom used to suffer a lot when she was young, and her aunts as well. We turned out to be like them for sure. At first I believed them, and convinced myself that it could be genetic. This is simply what women go through, and this is our normal. It was only until four years ago that I decided to look deeper into this and find out for myself if this was truly normal. At that point, I decided to stop ignoring the pain. I came to realize that this pain was there to stay. It was now lingering in my pelvic area every day. I had to do something about it. After many visits to several gynecologists, it became even more frustrating. No one was able to diagnose it, and some even told me it was all in my head. After a while, I began to believe that, until one night I had severe sharp pains and was rushed to the ER. And that is when I got my confirmation. First, they discovered an ovarian cyst that had to be removed. That was not in my head for sure. After surgery, I was also told I had, the, I had endometriosis, something that is definitely physical. Endometriosis is when, is when the tissue that normally lines the inside of the uterus grows outside of the uterus and mostly around the pelvic area. This tissue acts as if it was still in the uterus and therefore bleeds with every period. Because this tissue is displaced and cannot exit the body normally, it causes a kind of internal bleeding. This condition can cause scar tissue, adhesions, and severe chronic pain. It took me seven doctors to get a proper diagnosis, and even then, I did not feel better. The pain continued, and this is even more surprising considering that one in every 10 women suffer from endometriosis. I was later treated with hormones that induced menopause 
in order for me to stop the endometriosis and relieve my pain for a period of time. While shutting down my ovaries with hormonal treatment seemed like a good idea to alleviate the knifing pain, I started to experience worse symptoms. I started to get hot flashes. I also started to gain weight and became very moody. Day after day, I felt that I was losing myself and I didn't know whom I was. I was 20 years old, but my body felt that it was 50. As the treatments became more aggressive, my symptoms worsened. I was vomiting an hour every day after taking the pill and became very depressed. At the point, I was on 17 pills per day. Between hormonal treatments and painkillers, my alarms would go off every few hours to remind me of my medication. But why am I sharing this with you? It is specifically because there is more that we can do about this. There is more support we can give women in my position. It was very hard trying to get someone to understand me and understand what I was going through. I felt very lonely and had difficulty facing the people around me. And the worst part? No one seemed to believe the intensity of my suffering. I would get comments that, you don't look this sick to me, or try to ignore your pain and stop giving it too much thought. I became very frustrated and felt that speaking up was actually the loneliest part. The disconnection from my surroundings, along with the nasty side effects from my medication, made my depression even worse. I was so desperate to feel understood that I carried out more research and insisted on reading more about women and their experiences with endometriosis. And it was then that I found out I was right. I was not alone. Most of the women had very similar experiences. It was very relieving at first to have found women that understood what I was feeling and what I was going through. Yet, it was very sad to see how many of them were suffering as well. Again, one in 10 women suffer from endometriosis, and it takes an average of seven to 10 doctors before getting a proper diagnosis. I found it very surprising that despite how common this disease is, everyone around me, even women, had not heard of it. It later hit me. Now it is still very shameful to talk about periods. I also started to see it clearly that we have difficulty in simply saying, I have my period. We still say, it's that time of month, or don't rose sheriff it. <laughs> and if we're even shy to hint using these phrases, we say, my stomach's hurting, you know, and we give a face. We grew up in a society where we learned that it is okay for a woman to be in pain, as if it is something normal and should be accepted. But this is wrong. It is not just inside your head. You're not just seeking attention. We should learn that it is not always just a painful period, and it is not always yomenu bimru. There might be more to that. Yes, now I am talking about endometriosis because it is what I experience. But what about the other diseases related to women that we do not focus on because we still find shame in talking about sensitive topics like periods, which is biological? Endo has no cure until today, and there is still a lack of awareness and understanding about this disease, despite the statistics. This topic does not just concern, does not just concern women. It concerns men equally, as they should also find more ease in accepting a natural thing like periods and the illnesses that could be caused by it, as it can concern their mother, sister, daughter, partner, or friend. No, it is not normal for women to live with pain all the time and experience dreadful periods and accept it. It is your right to ask and not suffer in silence. It is not natural to feel pain and keep quiet. Also, it is not a hype to seek help, as some women find it humiliating to talk about periods or even hear other women talk about periods openly. The hype 
is for us to still feel embarrassed about our periods. In many cases, severe and chronic pain can come in the way of your daily life. Endometriosis did not just cause physical pain, it caused emotional and psychological pain. Especially when I learned that there is no cure and that I will have to undergo surgery every while. It has so far been my fourth surgery, and I have another one next month. Despite the pain I feel, I find comfort in knowing at least the cause of my pain and having an answer to the cause of my symptoms. I at least know that it is not all in my head and that by listening to what my body is trying to tell me, I can learn a lot. Although endometriosis came in the way of my daily life, I had too many dreams to give up there. By learning more about my condition and my body, I learned that I am normal, but my normal is simply different. I can still have dreams and ambitions, but at the same time, I need to constantly learn to listen to my body and what it is trying to tell me. I should also accept that, that it is okay to have a bad day and not be as productive as I wished because my body is fighting a battle of its own every day. It is by speaking up about a sensitive topic that I learned about a whole new world I am a part of. Despite it being a hard journey, at the end of the day, I learned I am not alone. Today, I hope you learned that too. And I also hope that if one day I have to scream from my pain again, that it would be in a delivery room with my family around me and from a contraction and not from my period. Thank you.